So my name is Jeff Kasmer. Uh, I run a company called Jumpstart Lab. Our business is building developers. Uh, my background is in teaching middle school and high school in 2009. I started teaching software developers. And most recently, what I want to talk to you about today is a program called Hungry Academy. Uh, it's run in conjunction between Jumpstart Lab and Living Social. It starts back in uh, about September of last year with a good friend, former competitor, uh, who thankfully Living Social acquired his company so he no longer was teaching Ruby classes. And then we could be better friends. And he said to me, if you had six months and good people, could you turn them into capable web developers? And because I'm trying to run a small business, I said, absolutely, Chad, just cut the check. Like, no problem. <laughs> and then he said, uh, OK, great, let's do it. If it doesn't work, you're not only going to get fired, you're probably going to get me fired. And I was like, all right, great, thanks. No pressure. Uh, so what was a capable web developer? I, was, I wanted to shape someone into the person I wanted to work with. It wasn't enough to me that you uh, could learn enough to get by that someone would give you a job because, as you've seen, this job market is desperate. They'll hire anybody. You can just say you know Ruby and Rails. None of the people hiring you know whether you know it or not, and they'll just put you off and like go Rails new an app, right? So I wanted to build people that were the ones I wanted to work with, that, were, that could do work we'd be proud of. So it started with recruitment. Uh, the application process, we had really no real requirements. Uh, if, you hadn't gra like, if you weren't beyond high school age, that would have been very complicated. Thankfully, we didn't really deal with that. Um, but other than that, I really didn't care what people's background was. We had an incredibly short application window. And marketing genius, we, tied it, um, we timed it such that the application was released December 15th and closed January 9th. So there were about eight work days or something like that that people could possibly hear about it. Nevertheless, uh, we got over 650 applications. And those included resumes, code, samples, or writing sample, depending on people's background, and most importantly, a video. And truth be told, I didn't look at any of the resumes, code samples, or writing samples. All I cared about was the video, because I wasn't hiring people for what they knew. It's what I thought they could know. The, were they the kinds of people that we wanted to work with? Could they, in this short video, an eight minute video answering five questions, could they communicate clearly? Did they seem like someone you could have a conversation with? Did they express passion? If they had those things, then it was worth a shot. Because development today has gone beyond like sit in a cube and hack code, right? Development today is about teams. It's about communication between the people on those teams. If you're good at communicating, the programming part is not really that hard. So from there, we picked 125 people, um, did phone screens with them, cut down to 100 people. And then it got really hard. I had this difficult question, how do you assess the aptitude of people for programming when they don't know any programming? We looked at who's trying to solve the same problem and found uh, the best answer I could come up with was the LSAT. The LSAT uh, law school admission test tries to assess your ability to comprehend and work with the law before you know anything about it. And so we took a small section from the LSAT. And I wasn't interested in the Facebook, Google game of like, give you some really hard problem and see if you crap your pants. It's not like, what is the point of that? Uh, that's not the way I wanted them to think of me and of the company. I liked. Uh, one of the GitHub guys talking about those software challenges, about doing things on the whiteboard, of they would give out, his theory was to give out those challenges, you know, write a crossword puzzle generator in five minutes on this whiteboard, and the first person to say, fuck this, and walk out gets the job. <laughs> so our premise, if the whole thing was about, I just steal other people's jokes, my jokes aren't that good. Um, our premise of this was, are you coachable and can you communicate? So what we did is we sat down and paired with them on these problems. Uh, we sat side by side, me and my co-instructor, and walked them through the logic problem. And I wasn't interested whether they got the answers right or not. Everyone should get the answers right, because I knew all the answers. I, could just, I would guide you down the right paths. But how did you respond to feedback along the way? 
That was the indicator I was looking for. If uh, you're going to coach someone, it doesn't matter how much they know at the beginning, it's how receptive are they, how can they work with the information you give them. So these are the 24 that made it. Uh, it was a 3.6% selection rate. You can tell Horace, the one who wasn't there for headshot day, has his little farmhouse glamour shot back there. Horace is with us here today. Uh, 16 out of the 24 self-identified as non-developers. So some of them had never written a line of code. Uh, some of them had done something like a Chris Pine book or some kind of small tutorials. Uh, and then among the other eight, three, I think, were computer science majors. So we had the whole gamut. And people would say to me, how are you going to teach people some that, are, that have been programming for four years and some that have never programmed before? And I can see how you would consider that almost absurd. But to flip it back around, it's like, how could you possibly have a, a team where you've got some architects and some junior developers? That can't possibly work. Well, of course it works. Like, we all have to make it work. So as long as you go into a teaching situation assuming that your learners are at different places, then you can succeed. Any, even if they appear to be at the same place at the beginning, that's just wrong. If you plan for people to all be learning the same things at the same speed, you will fail. So we knew we couldn't do that. The program started in March, continues through July, so we're in kind of the wrap-up phase now. Uh, it's full-time, and they're paid, they're living social employees on a short-term contract through the end of July. Uh, we, our, our day is structured 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., but most of them work well past that. Uh, that's my one hesitation about the program is I don't like conditioning them to the idea that being a developer means burning the midnight oil every night because uh, I don't think that's healthy. But a typical week, they spend about 12 hours in a classroom environment where they get to listen to me just like this on awesome microphones, boomingly talking down their ears. Uh, 14 hours a week, they spend on projects. Those started first as individual project, moved on to pair project, and then teams of four. Two hours a week, uh, we do presentations. So they give lightning talks to kind of prepare them to do things like this. And finally, five hours a week in open source time, open source community time. So writing tutorials, fixing gems, uh, et cetera. Also reading groups, one-on-one -on -one meetings, office hours, shadowing people around the company, and listening to guest speakers. And our projects drive everything. I hated when I used to teach, the worst thing you can hear as a teacher is when kids are like, why do we have to know this? Why do we have to know this? So the strategy with our class is all about giving you a project and teaching you what you need to know just after you need it. Then you never hear that question. <laughs> First, early on, we had a lot of hand-holding. We would say, like, write this method. Here's the input parameters. Here's what you need to output. And now we're to the point where they're architecting things completely on their own. Uh, I have to go a little bit faster. So what did we do? Six weeks of pure Ruby. Uh, since then, hey, I know, we, uh, SQL, TD, APIs, architecture, ops, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, tracker, and agile development, building services projects. So most recently, they wrapped up a service-oriented design project, thanks to Paul Dix uh, spending some time chatting with the class. The winning project was this, an integration between speaker deck, flash video audio presentation, and a chat room all powered by WebSockets via Fay, such that you could re remotely present a speaker deck, give the audio and video, and have a chat going here at the same time. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Charles does. So they're making it. Uh, 22 of 24 I expect to be in full-time engineering positions. The remaining two will uh, find other positions within Living Social. And the conclusion here is that this works. So what's next? We're done at Living Social, but I think we've proven the model. And so I want to figure out how we can push this further. Because really, I don't care that much about selling deals. I care about what I see as social progress. And I care about diversity. If you've read one of my favorite books called The Talent Code, he talks about ignition. And ignition is when you see someone who you can believe that you could become them. So who will see one of these 24? and believe that I could be, maybe I am Mary from customer service, never programmed a line in my life, and I'm gonna become a developer. Or maybe I'm Horace the architect, or whatever, and just can become this. So are you next, or can you find the person who's next? 
How can we get more people involved in this community? How can we uh, unlock for them the generational growth? Right? Like for most of these people, we have doubled, if not more, their lifetime's earnings in six months. So what effect does that mean for their family, for their children, for their grandchildren? If you'd like to start up a similar program, hit me up. I'm Jeff. I'll be on the boat. Thanks.